Hey guys, so today I'm going to teach you how to use hexagonal Francisco as a beginner's method for solving a Rubik's Cube. And when you teach it to someone, it'll really set them up to learn how to solve a Rubik's Cube better in the future and how to improve and like learn techniques and skills and stuff. And the reason I say using hexagonal Francisco is because while normally you might learn a layer by layer method, those are very algorithm dependent. And if you use hexagonal Francisco, I've figured out a way to do an actual beginner's method that is not too difficult to learn and it uses very few algorithms until the last few steps. It gives beginners an intuitive way to build up their first two layers, and I think that's pretty valuable to be able to do because it'll make it easier to learn other intuitive methods in the future. So this isn't gonna be a tutorial on how to solve Rubik's Cube with my beginner's method or anything, but it is sort of gonna be a guide for you if you ever wanna teach someone who you know who isn't a cuber, if you wanna teach them how to solve Rubik's Cube but you wanna do it in a way so that maybe you hope that they'll get into cubing more later, I suggest you try it. I'm teaching my girlfriend it right now and she seems to be learning it quite easily, so I think it works pretty well, let's go. I'm gonna be teaching with the white hexagon, so first break up the hexagon into two major steps. The first one is a three quarters cross, so you do that by putting three white edges on the yellow side and that should be fairly easy to do. People can get it intuitively quite easily. Then you align them with their centers and flip it down to the white side. You do that for all of them. Then you have your three quarters cross. Then you fill in these corners on your cross to make the rectangle. And the way you do that is you can teach with a sort of um, intuitive method for solving the corners. Sure, you could teach like R, U, R prime, U prime or something. But I think that it's not too difficult to understand. What I've been teaching is you just break your cross, insert the corner, and solve your cross. And then for this one right here, break your cross, insert this corner, solve your cross. Then you check, oh, it's not solved, so you just put a random corner in its place. Then you reposition the corner, break your cross, insert the corner, check. Oh, nope, just put a random one in its place, and you keep doing that, knowing that it flips that corner and eventually it'll be solved. So then you have this, and then the last corner to add to the hexagon would be this one right here, and that one can be done basically intuitively. Shouldn't be too hard to explain to someone how to get that. Now this is the cool part of where it gets to be a good beginner's method because you can basically do all this keyhole block building stuff, your F2L, completely intuitively if they understand sort of the break and restore thing for the corners. So that'll probably be the hardest part of the method for them to understand. And then from there, just the rest of it, all this keyhole block building for the E layer. If you don't already know the steps of Hexagonal Francisco, I suggest you check out my other video on it. But yeah, so anyway, you have them build up the E layer and keep their hexagon together. And they can do that just like advanced hexagonal Francisco, the exact same way. It's pretty easy to understand intuitively. Now this is the part where I haven't exactly thought of the best way to teach it. I'm thinking that you could actually do some intuitive pairing stuff with this one. Um, so like if the corner's in the top layer, there's gonna be three different ways it can be oriented and then you just teach them intuitively how to solve those three different cases. Shouldn't actually be too difficult. You might wanna use algorithms for that. So maybe come up with three algorithms and then if it's in the corner, if the corner's in the spot where it's supposed to be like right now, you just use a random algorithm. So anyway, you teach them how to get the corner in there, and then you teach them like the standard soons stuff to orient corners. Basically just recognize how to do the different cases with corner orientation using a combination of soons. So far this method requires one algorithm, although if you want to give them a little bit more for solving that last pair, you could have it include four algorithms at this point, which is about normal. The next step is edge orientation, and this is something that I think can be done intuitively, and if they can understand it intuitively, that really sets them up to be better at it in the future. So if you just kind of teach them that doing this standard M prime U or U prime M flips these three, and you tell them that they're trying to end up with three flipped edges on the top, I think that most people will be able to do it. So, like for example, they can look at this case and say, you wanna have three on the top, you have to flip three of these, so you got two and these two, you can flip these three and end up with three on top, right? Then you've got these three misoriented edges, and then you just do that to solve them, and then teach them M prime U2 M to insert that last edge. Then they're just on PLL and you can do that like any other beginner's method, so maybe doing an A perm and then a U perm, and there you go, you're done. So if you teach them intuitive F2L, which I think is possible, then you can solve this entire cube with just two algorithms as a beginner. Or, sorry, three algorithms as a beginner. Or if you want to go slightly less intuitive, six algorithms. And I guess the edge orientation thing is kind of an algorithm, although it's pretty intuitive and easy to follow how it works if you just look at the pieces. So once they learn that, I wouldn't really consider it one. But if you want to consider it that, that's seven algorithms. So there you go, there's my seven algorithm hexagonal Francisco method, although really it's more like two algorithms if 
you're confident in their ability and they're willing to be a little bit patient and learn how to do the intuitive stuff. Two algorithms, beginner's method, not that hard to understand, and it sets them up really well with some more advanced concepts. I'll be sure to let you know how my experiment with teaching it goes. So far, we've got it down to building a rectangle, and that hasn't been too difficult to do. And like I said, I think it'll get easier from here, so I'll keep you updated. So yeah, that's my tutorial kind of walkthrough guide for you if you ever want to teach someone intuitive hexagonal Francisco. I know the method's kind of ridiculous as a speed cubing method, at least right now, but as a beginner's method, I actually think you can teach someone a really efficient and just overall good beginner's method. I don't know, what can I say? I really like it. Let me know if what I said seems like it'll be too difficult. We'll find out soon, or at least I'll have an anecdote about it. Um, but so far it seems to be going well, and yeah, intuitive F2L with a beginner's method. I think that's pretty good. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.